Hello, 3D printing friends. Today on the BB3D channel, we are back into our Getting Started in Electronics series, and I can't decide whether today's episode is a little tilted or is really on the ball. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian, and you are watching BB3D. Hi everyone, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, electronics, and cool stuff like that, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so this is the Getting Started in Electronics series in which we're exploring electronics and code using the Elegoo Super Starter Kit for Uno. This is a nice sub $40 kit that includes the Elegoo version of the Arduino Uno, sensors, switches, LEDs, wires, a servo, a small stepper motor, and all sorts of other electronic components, and it all comes in this cool little case. Now, last time in this series, we learned about using active and passive buzzers with the Arduino Uno, and the time before that, we learned about using digital inputs to control LEDs. Now, this time around, we're going to combine the two of those lessons plus a different kind of input device in a fun, interactive way. In the digital inputs episode, we were using push-button switches. For this episode, we're going to use a different kind of switch. Allow me to introduce the tilt slash ball switch. Everyone, meet tilt slash ball switch. Tilt slash ball switch, meet everyone. Well there, and now that we have the introductions out of the way, let's go over how this little switch works. Inside this cylinder, there are two electrical contacts at this end where the leads come out of the package, and there's a small metal ball that rolls around inside here. Now when the switch is in this orientation, with the leads at the bottom, the ball rolls down and bridges the gap between them, completing the circuit. If this were an on-off switch, this would be the on position. But when the switch is tilted the other way, with the leads at the top, the ball rolls away from the contact points, and the circuit is open, and this is the off position. Now I was thinking of ways to make use of something like this, and I thought, what about an UNO theft alarm? I mean, it's totally impractical, but it does illustrate one way to use what is essentially a gravity-powered switch. My idea for this is pretty simple. Activating the tilt switch would trigger code running on the UNO to sound the buzzer and light up an LED, and you could mount something like this inside a box. So if someone moves the box a little bit, the tilt switch activates and beeps and lights and hijinks ensue, and continue to ensue, until you reset the UNO. So this should be pretty simple to put together. We're going to need the UNO and the breadboard. We're also going to need the tilt switch, the active buzzer, an LED in your choice of color, I'm using a classic red one, and a 220 ohm current limiting resistor. We'll also need a few of the wires to connect all these things together, and you can use whichever colors you want for this. So let's start by getting this wired up, and then we'll write the code to make it all work. Now here's a schematic you can refer to while connecting the components to the UNO. You can pause here if you want to start wiring this up from the diagram, or just keep watching because I'm about to start plugging everything together. First, use a wire to connect the blue ground rail on the breadboard to a ground pin on the UNO. Then plug the tilt switch into the breadboard and use a wire to connect one of its leads to the breadboard's ground rail, and then wire its other lead to pin 10 on the UNO. The tilt switch isn't a polarized component, so it doesn't matter which lead you connect to ground. Next, plug the active buzzer into the breadboard. This is the buzzer that has a short lead and a longer lead, and the underside of it is protected by a layer of black epoxy. Now this is a polarized component, and the shorter lead is the ground lead. The leads are spaced far enough apart that I can plug the ground lead into the ground rail, and the long lead into the other breadboard rows. Now make note of which row you plug the long lead into, and then use a jumper wire to connect that row over to pin 9 on the UNO. Now it's time for the resistor and the LED. Plug one side of the resistor into the ground rail, and then the other side into the breadboard rows. Then plug the LED into the breadboard. Now remember, LEDs are polarized components too, and the shorter lead is the ground lead. There's also that flat spot on the flange to indicate which side of the LED is ground. So when you plug the LED in, make sure the short lead is in the same row as the resistor. Then wire the other lead on the LED to pin 8 on the UNO. And that's it for the wiring. Now it's time to write the code. Now the code that we get from Elegoo for this lesson literally just turns on the UNO's LED when the switch is on and turns it off when the switch is off. 
And now it turns out that the tilt switch is actually pretty sensitive to motion. So when the switch is right side up in the on position, the slightest nudge will cause the ball to move around, making and breaking that connection rapidly, and kind of just making the LED flicker and dim a little bit until it settles back into the space between the two contacts. So while that does demonstrate that the switch is working, it's kind of boring. And remember, we're going to make a theft alarm, so we're going to ignore the Elegoo code for this lesson and write our own. So let's switch over to the computer. The code isn't very complicated, so we're just going to type it in. Let's get into the Arduino IDE and make a new sketch. Click File and then click New. Before we even really get started, let's save it by clicking the File menu and then clicking Save. Name it Tilt Switch. So, like last time, creating a new sketch gets us the framework of a working sketch with the setup and loop functions ready for us to add code. Now, we've got three things plugged into the UNO, so we should declare some integer variables to hold those pin numbers. That way our code has useful names to refer to and we're not just looking at numbers without knowing what's connected to those pins. So, add a few blank lines at the top of the file. Let's add a comment to ourselves so that later when we look at our code, we will know what's going on here. Comments start with two slashes, so type slash slash pin variables and press return. Then we'll actually declare the variables. Type int LED pin equals 8 semicolon and press return. Then type int buzzer pin equals 9 semicolon and press return. And int tilt pin equals 10 semicolon and press return. Next, let's work on the setup part of the code. This is the code that runs once, right when the UNO starts up. Now we need to set up the pins, so we'll start with a comment. Type slash slash setup pins and press return. Then type pin mode, open parenthesis LED pin, comma output, close parenthesis semicolon and press return. Pin mode, open parenthesis buzzer pin, comma output, close parenthesis semicolon and press return and pin mode, open parenthesis, tilt pin, comma, input, underscore, pull up, close parenthesis, semicolon, and press return. Then let's make sure that the LED and the buzzer are turned off as we're starting up. We might as well add a comment to that effect. Comments are important. When you look at this code six months from now, you'll thank me. Type slash slash, make sure the LED and buzzer are turned off, and then press return. Now type digital write, open parenthesis, LED pin, comma, low, close parenthesis, semicolon, and press return. And digital write, open parenthesis, buzzer pin, comma, low, close parenthesis, semicolon, and press return. And that's it for setup. Onward to loop. So in here, we're going to monitor the tilt switch. The code in this function runs immediately after the setup function completes, and it loops over and over again. In the setup function, we set up the tilt pin as not just an input, but an input with one of the UNO's internal pull-up resistors attached to it. And we wired it so that when the switch is in the on position, that pin is connected to ground. So that means when the switch is in the on position, the input reads a low signal. And when the switch is in the off position, the input reads a high signal. The signals are backwards from what you might think they should be, where usually we consider low or zero to be off and high or one to be on. But we have to do it this way because while the UNO has internal pull up resistors, it doesn't have internal pull down resistors. So we're going to use the tilt switch as a trigger for our theft alarm. As soon as the code sees the tilt pin go high, it knows the circuit was broken, even if it only happens for a split second. And when that event occurs, we're going to set the LED pin high to turn the LED on, and we're going to set the buzzer pin high to turn on the buzzer and start getting attention. Because the switch being disturbed can mean only one thing. Someone's trying to steal your UNO. So let's write the code. I'm going to save a little time and just paste in the comments because they basically say what I just said. And paste. Okay, we'll use an if statement to keep an eye on the tilt pin. Type if, open parenthesis, digital read, open parenthesis, tilt pin, close parenthesis, equals equals high, close parenthesis. And rather than following that with a semicolon, let's use an opening curly brace and then press return. And when we do that, the Arduino IDE helpfully adds the closing curly brace. 
we're now inside the part of the if statement which gets executed when the tilt pin is high, meaning the switch was bumped or moved and the circuit opened up, however briefly. This is where we want to turn on the LED and sound the buzzer. So type digital right, open parenthesis LED pin, comma high, close parenthesis semicolon and press return. Then type digital right, open parenthesis buzzer pin, comma high, close parenthesis semicolon. And that's it for the code. Save your work by clicking file, then clicking save. Now let's plug the Uno into the computer with a USB cable. Then make sure the Uno board type is selected in the IDE. Click Tools, then point to Board. It should be set to Arduino Uno. If it isn't, make it so. Then make sure the correct USB port is selected. Click Tools and point to Port. The port the Uno is connected to should be selected. If it isn't, select it. There, that should probably ensure our success for the next phase. Click the Upload button to send the code to the Uno. If anything goes wrong, the Arduino IDE will show you an error message. Sometimes it's because of a typographical error which presents the code from compiling. If this happens to you, the IDE will highlight the line that has the problem. Usually it boils down to something simple like capitalization or forgetting a semicolon at the end of a line. So correct the error and try again. Once the IDE has successfully uploaded the code to the Uno, it'll display a small done uploading message at the lower left corner. So now the code is running on the Uno, and with the switch in the vertical position, the tilt switch input is connected to ground, so it's a logic low. Now remember, our code is looking for a high signal, and that happens when the circuit is broken, meaning the tilt switch input is no longer held low by ground. The pull-up resistor pulls that input up to a high signal, and our if statement in the loop function sees that and turns on the LED and the buzzer. So let's simulate some Grand Theft Uno. Tap the breadboard with your finger. <laughs> See, even that tiny bit of a bump is enough to break that circuit for a split second, sending the tilt switch input high and sounding the alarm. <laughs> and when the tilt switch input goes low again after having gone high, the code doesn't care. It doesn't check for that. The LED and the buzzer are still going. It's just going to keep screaming until we come see what the problem is. And the only way to calm the Uno down is to unplug or reset it. So press the reset button on the Uno and enjoy the sweet sound of silence. Now, that behavior is by design. This is supposed to alert us to someone trying to steal our Uno. Just because the would-be thief ran off when the alarm started, uh, alarming, that's no reason for the Uno to stop being offended about it. So yes, a reset puts things back in order and quiets things down. So I pulled power from it though, so I don't accidentally set it off while we wrap things up. Now, if you've been going through the Elegoo lessons that come with the kit, you may have noticed that I occasionally diverge from them. For instance, I combined the active and passive buzzer lessons because that made sense. And the lesson covering the tilt switch was literally just lighting up the Uno's onboard LED. I want these videos to be entertaining and at least a little engaging, but that would have been super boring. So it seemed like it would be more fun to combine stuff that we've already covered with something new, and I think this was a good way to show a use for the tilt switch. Now, I know some of you are here because you're interested in both 3D printing and electronics, and some of you are here strictly for this electronic series, and whichever the case may be for you, just know that everyone is welcome. Now the cool thing about the Arduino Uno is that it's like the smaller sibling to the Arduino Mega, and the Arduino Mega is the AM in the RAMPS controller, which is the brains of a lot of 3D printers, so that's how all this ties in with the 3D printing channel. And now anyway, if you're interested in this Elegoo Super Starter Kit for Uno, there's a link in the description where you can pick one up. It's got the Elugu version of the Arduino Uno, a whole bunch of sensors and other components, and this case to hold it all. Now this breadboard mount and Uno holder is one that I 3D printed. It doesn't come with a kit, but you can find the file for that in the description too. Well, my 3D printing and electronics friends, that's all the time that we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's go make something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways that you can do exactly that. Now don't forget, whether you're interested in buying things that were featured in this video, or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at too. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. 
Subscribing is absolutely free and is an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.